T Box Talk episode 10. This week on the podcast, I am joined today by Josh, Slim Shady, and <laughs> Nikki Shanks. <laughs> You had that one loaded up before we Absolutely. got on the podcast. <laughs> oh, man. The second you sent me that Snapchat over the weekend, I was like, that's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, as always, my name's Andrew. Today, Josh, Will, Nikki Shanks on the podcast. Today, we're going to be doing some weekend roundup, some golf news, what are we watching, tales from the golf course, and then some behind the scenes at Omada. Guys, how was the weekend? Uh, Will. Take it away with the uh, with the bleach hair. What, uh, what made you want to? What made you want to do it? Uh, well, we were actually, my girlfriend and I were, we were playing around with like uh, Snapchat filters and mm. I saw myself with like red hair and I'm like, that might work. And then my girlfriend's like, no, you have a pink skin tone. It's not going to look good with your skin. I'm like, all right, well, let's just bleach it then. So we ended up going to Sally's and yeah, Slim Shady came out. What is it? Sally's? Yeah. It's just a hair, hair product store, I guess. I don't know. It's right near our apartment, but. Is it like easy to do? No, this took like two hours. What? <laughs> yeah. I had to like sit in like one of those caps and my head was burning and then like. Your head was burning? Yeah. It's not an easy process. It, you know. I, oh, yeah. Because they do the dry it. No, as I give girls credit for like being able to like sit there and like, you know, sit through like a three, four hour hair appointment when they're getting their hair like, you know, colored or whatever it may yeah. be. So, yeah. No, it happened on Friday. Uh, it was a big weekend. Um, you know, we played that great round of 18 at Kirk Ray. Beautiful day. Oh, yeah. That was lit. We all played pretty well. Nick, I can't speak for you. Um, <laughs> did almost wipe the floor with you, though, but you got me on 18. Almost so. doesn't count. All right. Well, That's all I have to say. Big hair change. Uh, I actually found out on this 18th tee that my girlfriend got a big promotion at work. So really? Yeah. Shout out, Marissa. Good job. Congratulations Woo-hoo. again. Class shout out. You. Shout out. Shout out. Yeah, it was a big golf weekend, though. Played 18 uh, with my dad and uncle on Saturday and tied my lowest career round at 71. Hey. That's awesome, man. It's a big round. A uh, I was going for 69, actually. I had a birdie putt on 17 that I missed, and then I went on to bogey 18. But Tough. All in all, super stoked, no Why? matter what. Why did you play so well? Was it just like you just on it that day? or I think it was I was playing with my dad, who I, you know, I always play well when I'm with my dad. I haven't seen my uncle in like almost a year, so he drove up from uh, – Kind of like, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. I'd just say bumfuck Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> and then my buddy Weez, uh shout out Weez, who I also haven't seen in like over a year. So I think it was just, you know, like you talk about like the people that you're playing with and the attitude. Um, everyone was in a good mood and the weather was good and uh, there was no one in front of us and no one in back of us. So Beautiful. Yeah, That's everything awesome, panned man. out. Josh, how was your weekend? What'd you do? Well, uh, my neck is still fucked up, so <laughs> I sat on a couch and I sat all weekend. Uh, I think it was because that round, you know? Yeah, I, just, I mean, you don't just pull your neck and get to play 18, like, within a week. <laughs> yeah. so that's I've, I've played three rounds of golf since I fucked my neck up, and after each round, I've progressively gone backwards in my pain. So, But you just can't get enough of it. I mean, honestly, like, dude, you only, in New England, you only have so much time. You know what I mean with the sun. Yeah. So yeah. that could, those the past couple of rounds, man, dude. Oh, even like going to Kirkbray, like I don't, I don't want to say I would have sacrificed the weekend for that, but that was definitely like so much fun. It was on Friday too, so it basically yeah. was the weekend. Um, no, we had a great day. Yeah, I was, would consider it worth it. Yeah, maybe. maybe. I don't think there was enough going on out, like near us that I would have had to go on somewhere else. You know, like I would have had gone into a city or something. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, me and you have a golf tournament coming up this Friday, so you <laughs> yeah. better be good to go. And I got to oh, hit the same because <laughs> I played like shit on Friday. I so. just <laughs> I just got done telling Will how I think I need to take a break from golf for a week or two. <laughs> that lasted a whole seven hours since like, you came in and told also, me this morning. Also, Kaluji <laughs> saying that it's definitely worth it when he feels none of the pain. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. Like, you oh, know what? It was worth it for us for you to be hurting. Yeah, for us to have fun. <laughs> yeah, of course it was. Yeah, but I all mean, in all, you played you played pretty pretty damn good on well what was weird was like i was definitely i felt fine in the round it's when i weirdly enough dude here's the weird part i felt fine in the round i felt fine afterwards i didn't have any pain i was at 100 percent. and i woke up the next morning and it was like imagine if you got you never feel like a charlie horse where like the muscle gets really tight but it's only one part of your leg or something in like sports Yeah. yeah so that's what's happening in my neck is i wake up the next morning after like feeling fine and it's just like there's a muscle in my neck that's just so I can't move it. And I'm like this and it kills. So I swung, you guys know this, I swung the least hard I think I've ever swung on a golf course that round and still fucked my neck, neck up. Well, you're all, well. Lu- you're all lubed up on the golf course and then you stop, you know? And yeah, that's yeah what, I think that's, that's when everything tightens up. You get cold. 
Yeah, yeah, dude, I don't have the recipe yet to, like, avoid that, you know? Yeah, but even playing, like, with the slower swing, I think you had played pretty damn good for, yeah. like, I think you kind of figured something out there. Like, you don't need to kill the ball or try to kill the ball. Well, it was like, weird. It, like, I actually have never experienced that. I was swinging the least hard I've ever swung, and I was driving it, I think, the furthest I've ever. Well, because it's all about contact. Well, well, you know what? It, I'll tell you what. It's, I mean, yeah, contact is part of it, but it boils down to ball spin. When I swing really, really hard, I'm getting the flex in the club, that wicked bend, that snap, but it's lifting the ball in every sort of direction and it's not hitting it. It's almost like throwing a curve ball versus a knuckle ball or something like a yeah. fastball, right? Yeah. Like you're not spinning the ball on a fastball, but like on any of those other balls, like you're, it, the spin causes that sort of wind resistance yeah. that makes it die. So yeah. I could swing really hard. It's almost like you ever seen a bear at 50 cal get shot into water? No, I haven't, but I want to. Well, what happens is you think, <laughs> how far do you think a bare 50 cal, 50 caliber, 50 caliber bullet will go into a body of water? How many feet deep? I'm going to guess not that much. I don't know. I feel like I feel like because you're asking, I'm going to guess not that much. Yeah, it's like a trick question. It opposite. is a trick question. I think it's going to go a, a mile. I think it's not going to go far you at all. You would think, right? But here's the thing. So I'm an idiot. When you shoot a bullet into water, much like when you hit a golf ball into wind, what happens is it the wind is explodes the bullet. Gotcha. So like the resistance to the wind slows it down so much so that imagine like a car hitting a stop motion like that. So it actually disintegrates the bullet because it's traveling so fast and there's so much resistance in the water that it slows it down. So when I was swinging slower, I had so much less wind resistance, but because the ball was just going dead straight yeah. and without all that spin. So hot day too, you know what I mean? On a good course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they was rolling. I mean, Kirkbury is in phenomenal condition right yeah. now. So yeah, it's a, it's, a it's uh, easily the nicest course I've played at least you know n- this year, but maybe the last few years. Yeah, really, even like on your golf trips, like going down south and stuff. Uh, I've never gone down south for golf. Oh. Lake Maury is you know it's Vermont golf. That's like the only golf trip I do. So it's a it's a little bit different than playing around here. But um, you know it was you know they they take really good care of Kirkbury. Oh yeah, they do. I think they closed the course one of the days just to maintain the everything. But I think a lot of country clubs do that. Uh, Nikki Shanks, how was your weekend? I parked 54 golf carts this weekend at work, and that's just about all I did. Sounds 54, fun. that's the magic number, yeah. LIV. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, I guess, yeah. No incident. We're, we're going to be getting into the LIV stuff very shortly here, but uh, so just working all weekend at the golf course? Work Saturday, Sunday. Did you get to play at all? Not one hole, and I didn't mind. You played I, a lot last week, though, I've I feel like. I've been playing golf more than I think I ever should. So I'm ready to pull a Josh and crank my neck up and just <laughs> dial it back and for dial seven it back, hours. Yeah, give it, you know, <laughs> give it a few few days maybe and put my feet up and watch people struggle on the golf course. I went into my cave this weekend and <laughs> was never heard from again. I uh, I do this from time to time where I just need to catch up and I just uh, I sat in my room for literally Saturday and Sunday, probably watched ten to fifteen movies. <laughs> It was incredible. I was just in my cave. 10 to 15 movies? I think I watched seven movies yesterday alone. Accompanied by a record eight potato sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really eat. I just I was just so zoned in. Colucci's keeping Netflix in business. <laughs> yeah, I on, his cave, on his cave weekends. Dude, it was freaking awesome. I had such a good time. And uh, we're going to get into it later when we do What Are We Watching? But I got a couple things I got to get off my chest that I'm really excited about. I'll pick one. And uh, if you're hearing <laughs> it, uh, so this is coming out on Thursday. If you're hearing it Thursday, tonight would be game six. Of the NBA Finals, I've been watching, you know, Friday night. Oh, that's how I started my whole weekend, was just watching the Celtics blow it in game, <laughs> four, game four. Uh, they were winning the whole game, and then they just kind of fell apart. Uh, sucked to watch, but, you know, on to tonight. We're recording this on a Monday, so game five tonight, game six when this podcast comes out. So next week when we record, I'll be either really happy that the Celtics are champions or depressed, so... Either one of those two options. Could be a cave weekend again. Yeah. Yeah. We're setting up for a cave weekend. <laughs> Actually, this weekend, me and Josh have the Dave Matthews Band concert, which is something we go to every year, which is really fun. Do you guys like Dave Matthews Band? DMB, yeah. Can't yeah, I, You can't hate it. Well, I guess you could, but I don't hate Dave Matthews. <laughs> There's a lot of people who hate the DMB crowd, and I don't, I don't really get that. I think the crowd at DMB is really fun. Like it's just It's just a lot of people having a good time. Yeah, just guys just bopping around, you know. I feel like it's like the same type of like 
jam band crowd that I would see at like Goose or something like that. Like you don't even need to know a lot of the DMB songs to have a good time at the concert. Like it's just good vibes. Uh, everybody always singing singing along, and like even if you don't know the words, you can just dance and have fun. Is that at uh, Xfinity? Yes, it's at Xfinity. Nice. And then I think Josh, you might be going to the Hartford show too. Yeah, I mean, it was talked about. Oh, you know what? He actually out the, of nowhere the hookup. What the guy? No, 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 no. I was gonna say, uh, my dad just got out of nowhere. He thinks he might have two tickets to the U.S. Open in Brookline. Whoa. Oh, the Country Club. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, would that be for Saturday or for Saturday? Or for Sunday? Saturday. Okay. Here's he wanted to get Sunday, but I mean, I don't even know if he could. But Under the roof. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was pricey. But crazy. he uh, he's pissing me off a little bit. As much as I love him, uh, it is because fa- it's Father's Day weekend. Holy yeah, so yeah, he, he kind of gets the end end decision, but he wants to go to. This is what he wants to do, or what what this weekend is planned for is. We have a golf golf tournament potentially going to play in that on Friday mm-hmm. morning. Then after that is DMB yep. in Mansfield. Yep. Then he wants to go to Brookline, which is like a good forty five to fifty out from my house. Yeah, yep. Go to the mat. Go to the U.S. Open. And then he wants to drive all the way from there into Hartford to go to another DMV concert. He wants to try to do wow. Brookline yes. and DMV. He wants in the to same. do both. He's refusing not to do both. And then he wants to come back the same night. So no no hotel or anything in Connecticut. <laughs> wow. So he wants to drive back from Connecticut. And then of course Sunday is gonna be Father's Day. So I'm like gonna golf. see that Full man's cookout. face every single fucking day of the weekend, like twenty four seven. I you know what? I'd be Stunned if JJ can pull this off, but I will. Uh, Him, I'd, I'd I can't to, pull this. Yeah, off. <laughs> I mean, I was just saying I could not pull. It's a that straight off. fucking marathon. Which would you rather do, though? Well, I mean, it's, it's actually can't really. What ask if you had that. to pit like DMB one day and then Friday? Basically, you pick Friday. Do you go to if you could pick the U.S. Open on Saturday, not Sunday? U.S. Open on Saturday or going to like a favorite concert of yours? Well, if you go on Friday, I'd go to U.S. Open on Saturday. That's what I was saying. Blow off DMB on in Hartford. Yeah, I would. It's also too. Hartford. Like I feel like it's probably better to see them at the Xfinity Center in Mansfield versus Hartford. Can I, I'm sorry. I'm well, from. It's the I'm, same. It's isn't it the same venue? I don't know. No, I don't know. It's but a, it, I actually think it's better at Hartford. Really? I'm well, I'm from Connecticut, so I'm biased, and I hate going into Hartford. If you you have to twist my fucking arm to get me to go in Hartford, and my I oh, grew yeah. up 20 minutes away. Oh, the location is horrible, yeah. but the actual venue and also the performance and the acoustics are better at that place than they are in Mansfield. It's fair. I, it's probably at there is an Xfinity in Hartford. Yeah, I feel like everybody from Connecticut hates Connecticut. Am I wrong in saying that? I mean, if you. <laughs> Depends yeah. Where you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, I guess it depends, but, like, I've lived in three different places in Connecticut, and I hated them all, and they were all vastly different. Like, I grew up in the country, and then I lived in Stanford. Like, two completely different areas, didn't like either of them. I mean, I feel like you could say the same thing about Rhode Island. Everybody from Rhode Island always talks shit about living in Rhode Island. Right, I love yeah. living in Rhode Island, so. And then they're, like, diehard, like, Rhode Island, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, it could go complete, both ways. Yep. Yeah. Now, you're setting up for a great weekend, though, and, uh, Hopefully I'll be there Friday night for the concert, so that'll be super fun. Um, but uh, let's uh, let's break up the weekend roundup uh, and go right into some golf news. Liv is probably going to hold the majority of this conversation. Uh, the they wrapped up their first tournament. Charles Charles Schwartzel wins the inaugural tournament. Definitely botched his spelling there. <laughs> Takes home four million dollars. <laughs> is that big? Is that is that big winnings, right? That's huge. That's huge. It's the biggest for like ever. A no name fucking tournament. <laughs> is that like, it's like double what PJ is so almost. Yeah. It's like what the fuck are we doing there, dude? Like that's crazy. A four million dollar take, and I think he got some of the team winnings as well because like his team won as well. Yeah. So then there was another five million to be divided up between the winning teams. So he definitely got at least another five hundred. That is so crazy. I, I think they said all in all it was around 4.5, 4.75 oh mil. That's for crazy. Th- for three days of golf. I mean, here's the thing, though, right? Is like That seems like a lot of money, right? But then again, you don't know where the PGA margins were. Yeah. So this might be a lot of money, but they might have just found that crack in the system that the PGA was just making way too much money. Yeah. And it's now true, they're just yeah. s- sacrificing a little bit of margin, or it could be a lot. I mean, it could be a lot. You know, who knows? But... Maybe it's not as substantial as it seems because PGA Tour has just been making so much money for so long. They've had a monopoly over the so entire you, golfing world. So I mean, you're saying like you think the PGA Tour was holding back from making the purses super expensive? Exactly what Phil Mickelson said. Was, I was just about to say like, that, yeah. The whole debate is not so much, should I go play LIV over PGA Tour? It's really, 
the frustration that the PGA Tour isn't paying the players enough. Like, when I saw a PGA Tour player who's not in the top 10 or 20 break down their finances. They're not, like, dude, they're, think about it. How many people in any one tournament can even play, qualify for that match? What is it, 100 people, right? How many? Do you know, Nick? What? Do you know how many, <laughs> how many, players, how many players can play in any given PGA tournament? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I think it depends on who's the um, sponsor. So different um, sponsors will have X gotcha. amount of places for sponsors. Give me a round things. number, what the One average f- is. 140. So 140 people show up, yeah. and, you know, on the final day, there's what? How many golfers? I think the field gets cut in half. So I think it's around 70. Yeah, so basically, like, se- there's 70 people that have the opportunity to make any decent money. Yeah, right? you could actually probably lose money because you have to probably pay for your own travel. Think well, actually, I know you have to right. pay but for your own travel. Think about that for a second. Think about those numbers. There's 70 people on this earth that can make that kind con- like the like big money in golf like that way. That's crazy. Such a small percentage, yeah. Dude, there's no other sport in the history of mankind that ha- is that dialed into. I mean, maybe there are other, a lesser than like sports that don't have the following that golf does, but think about it. That's a global sport. There are like 90 million golfers in the, in the world. Like it's not small. And no. also, like, the depth of skill in golf, like, Corn Ferry Tour, all the mini tours, European Tour, are all stacked, right? Yeah. Like, any of those guys could flip a switch and be on the tour or now LIV any time they really turn it on. So, it's I mean, crazy. just to get into Corn Ferry is a big accomplishment, and you're making, like, no money. You're making, like, $5,000. And you're probably losing money, like I said, because right. I, I remember I was listening to a podcast once where a golfer was breaking it down. He pretty much said, if you don't make the cut, you kind of lose money because you have to pay for your travel, pay for your stay pay for anybody you're bringing out there, like your right. team members, your your caddy and stuff. So, like, if you're not making the cut, you're losing money. And that's just th- – those are just the business expenses. <clears throat> that's not in yeah. factoring in the fact that they have families that need to be paid for or they have coaches yeah. that are year-round. Like, yeah, right. fly the coaches down yeah. and stuff. Caddy takes stuff. 10% of everything they win, right? Like, yeah. it's – I mean, it's so the the live tour. Everybody hates the fact that it's Saudi money, which I do too. I mean, it would be great if it was Greg Norman was sponsoring the whole thing, and it just like you know that, his I think, money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, man, like it's actually creating a, a a bit of a diversity to the game, and it's also creating an opportunity for golfers who have never been able to make that kind of money um, make a little bit more, and also for a new new up and coming players to get in their name quick. Now, True. For we talked about like the biggest winnings. Last place still took home 120. And did it, did you guys see the score? What was the score? Plus 24 <laughs> <laughs> wow. for three days, right? So if you think about that, it's Andy Ogletree. He played at Georgia Tech. Um, just had an off week, I guess. Tossed an 82. I mean, par 70 for the course. So anywhere else, really, par 72, that's 380s. Making one hundred twenty thousand dollars. That's like that was my round at Kirkbray. I was gonna say yeah. like that's like one of you guys, right? I mean, <laughs> maybe not me, but it's crazy. That's wild. From a structure standpoint, I mean, I only watched in the office on Thursday. I didn't watch Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. But I think from a structure standpoint, um, I had a very positive outlook on it. Uh, It was Mm fast-paced. So they they squeaked in, like, a whole crap load of golf in, like, four hours, basically. Um, It's uh, – I thought the whole filming of it was done really well. I thought the branding from LIV was done very well. Um and then, I don't know if you guys heard this, this is unrelated to the structure, but during the awards ceremony, like one of the uh, the head guys of the LIV League made an announcement that, you know, LIV means 54. And so if you were to go out and shoot a perfect round, a perfect round is, I guess, 18 birdies, so that would be a 54, they will award that person $54 million. Yep, I saw this. What? I yep. saw this. Oh, on the live tour. Yeah, so if you went on the live tour and you shot a 54, 18 under par – then you would take home $54 million. Has I it ever it, been done? I don't think it just has to be a 54, though. I think it has to be a birdie on every hole. Oh, you think? Okay, I didn't, I I didn't watch it. I saw, of course, I saw it on Instagram and TikTok and shit, but... Yeah, no, but that, it is real, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. 54 Has anybody million. ever even hit that? I, mean, is I that doubt an it. An achievable no. score? The lowest I think I've ever seen the college kid shot 57. Oh, I mean, he's not that far off. I saw yeah, what's-his-face. I mean, uh, it's he, crazy, though. Oh, man, older guy. Furek? Furyk, he had that fifty-eight. Is it fifty-eight? Is it 58? That is yeah. his record round. That's yeah. crazy. Can you imagine if you did that and then you just got handed a check for fifty-four mil? 
Like, that'd be fucking And awesome. that's a fun branding piece, though. It's like, nobody's ever going to do that. But if they did do it, that'd be cool. And it kind of just leads you like, wow, that's a pretty wild thing to like. That's that's gambling. Uh, that's throwing it out there for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's <laughs> like, uh, who is it? Uh, I think it's Warren Buffett. Uh, if he said he'll give the p- first person to ever create the perfect bracket for the NCAA tournament, will get a billion dollars. He'll really? Give them, he'll give them a billion. No, he's done it for the last like five, six, ten years. Nobody's ever done it. Yeah. It's like impo- it's like mathematically almost impossible. I think what I'm really excited for is I know Phil didn't play that well at LIV. Um, but I would love to see him come out and win the US Open. Yeah. So that okay. would just cause the world to shut down. So this was <laughs> I, this like really confused me for a second because I was like, how is how are all these guys playing on the US Open if they all got suspended. The U.S. Open, I, I should have known this, but it's not sponsored by the PGA. It's sponsored by the USGA. Right. So they're all getting to play. So all those LIV players are going to be at the U.S. Open this weekend, and it's going to be... Tensions are going to be high. Yeah. They lost. So they lost their they lost their PGA cards. Or their not their PGA cards. Their PGA... Tour. The PGA Tour. Tour cards. Their yeah. status. Is it tour? Yeah, status. status we'll say status. Yeah. But they can still play on all the USGA uh, but matches. Man, there's only correct. one, though, right? It's well, just the Masters as well. The Masters okay, and the U.S. Open, which is why Phil kept saying over and over, I'm going to keep playing the Masters and all yeah. that. But, uh, you know, it, it does bother me, though, dude. Like, the, what do you guys think about the fact that you're not going to be able to walk? Like, if you were to go to Travelers or any of these other golf tournaments that we've typically gone to. Deutsche Bank years, or something. Yeah, you can't. You're not going to see them on. Doesn't that? I it's mean, true. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to see Travelers. I'm, I've got tickets for Sunday. And um, I used to follow Phil every year. Oh, really? So it'll be weird because I usually I, – I always have this, like, argument between whether I want to get, like, seat tickets or I want to get ground tickets and follow people. It's The price difference is substantial, but I don't know who I'm going to follow this year. Which one's more expensive? The seats are more expensive? Oh, yeah, the seats yeah. are more expensive. I've really only gotten seat tickets um, through, like, friends and my father who usually gets them from clients and stuff, so – those are wildly expensive. You can get corporate tickets. That's even better because you're like on the 18th hole and it's like mm-hmm. open bar and open food. So it can get messy. But <laughs> but if you're walking around on the ground, like I said, I've always followed Phil. So this year going into it, I'm not entirely sure what my plan is going to be. Rory. Follow Rory. He's playing in it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because okay. he's, he's still on the PJ. Well, then there's my answer, JT, Rory. Follow JT. Justin Thomas. Yeah, well, because Justin Thomas. Uh, so they had an event in Canada uh, this weekend. And I think Rory won it. And, uh, he and he was battling back and forth with JT. JT came out and tweeted, what a week. That's why we play. And that's why we play on the PGA Tour. Got to battle against one of the best today and got out but not without a fight. Congrats to Rory McIlroy, yada, yada, yada. But, like, he kind of, like. They're just throwing subtle shots at yeah. but that, all the That LA. win is, like, the worst part is, like, you look at that win and you go, I mean, it's almost a discredited win. It's, yeah, I mean, you like, didn't compete against any of the best players in the world. You know, like you might some of them maybe, but the ones that actually win tournaments are all in the fucking live tour. Right. And like, that that's a big argument, too, regarding the Masters and world ranking, because like we we're saying, they can still play the U.S. Open in the Masters. But those are entry is given through status like world ranking. Right. Yeah. And for DJ, who's up there, you know, to be playing, he's I think he's maybe what, 13 in the world or something along those lines or mm-hmm. lower. Everyone else in the field is below him. So he's expected to win. Right. Right. So unless he wins, his world ranking's gonna get hurt. Right? Oh, that's and, true. And yeah. that could affect him getting into like obviously he's won the masters, so not a problem there. He has a lifetime exemption. But you know, world ranking wise for some of these guys who are kind of lower playing against a lot of higher in the L I V tour, it's gonna be tough for them because they're gonna have to win to stand up to somebody who makes a top ten finish on the PGA tour. It's so crazy. So here's what I'm nervous about. The PGA Tour did what they did. They banned all those players that are playing on the Live Tour. We all knew that was coming. My fear is that the USGA will follow suit. And that's why I, I've been re- I was reading online that some people think it might happen. It's not gonna, it didn't happen for the US Open because I think there just hasn't been enough time. But what if the USGA comes out and says, you know what, we're going to follow the PGA Tour everyone on the LIV is banned from our events as well. I think that's only going to happen if, like, Jay Monahan and the PGA Tour commit, like, those people apply pressure. And you don't think they will? Cause I, they're, they, cause I think, like they you said, it's the, too soon to know right now. If they, I mean, play in the, if they play in those major tournaments, the U.S. Open, the Masters, that will make Jay Monahan look kind of bad. Like, it'll make him look soft. Like, you're a bitch. Like, let, just let them play. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, selfishly, I'm rooting for the LIV guys to to score well on on these uh, USG. No, yeah, guys. exactly. Like I, I I feel bad that they got banned, you know, and so like. But the <sighs> thing, but the thing you got to think about here is, this these are the initial reactions. These are the PGA Tour is butthurt about this, and you know they're kind of being they're being like I don't want to say immature about it, but like trying to ban the people that bring in all your revenue is a fucking mistake. I don't care how big of a company you are. When you have leverage in a business, that leverage is, be- you have that leverage in the first place because you generate revenue. You just eliminated literally the biggest names in golf. You eliminated Bryson DeChambeau. You eliminated, and I, fuck them play on the tour. Like you eliminated them from the PGA tour. That was the action they took. Yep. Who did, look at the major sponsors for every one of the biggest golf companies you can think about. Callaway, who's who's their rep? Was oh. Phil. Was Phil. <laughs> okay. <Recipes>. Titleist. <laughs> who's Titleist is big person? JT now. JT. Okay, yeah. so Titleist is still in the game. They also have Tiger Woods, which maybe Titleist stepped in and said, we want you on the PGA Tour, not live. But if you go down the list and you keep going, like Taylor made one of their biggest guys, Dustin Johnson. Yeah, yeah. that is like, true. Who's it, Kevin Nah? I think he might be. He's Callaway. He's, oh, Cal- he's with Callaway. Yeah. Okay. So my point being is that when those people, players win and they have a Callaway hat on or they have a TaylorMade hat on. That's what generates revenue for the golf industry. That's what that's what associ- people associate those matches with. Nobody mm-hmm. looks at the PGA Tour and goes, oh, I'm a PGA Tour fan. Like They look and they go, oh, I love Tiger Woods. I love Phil yeah. Mickelson. I love the big names. So the PGA Tour is going to get fucking smacked if they keep these rules yeah. up. You know, I think in the next couple of years, I think they're going to end up bending. I, just uh, think, I think it's going to take yeah. less than that. I and think it'll take. Yeah. They're also creating like this hot spot, right, for the Masters and the U.S. Open that, like we're saying, like we don't want to go somewhere and not see everybody. So now those tournaments where everybody's there are going to be so desirable yeah. for somebody just to go one place. Like for us, it's Boston right now. I mean, it's close, but I mean, everything's happening right now, so we don't really understand it, but years down the road say that they don't bend, those are going to be hot spot, hot commodity tickets to see everybody in one place competing because, I mean, you can always talk about who would win if they're playing together, but for those two events a year to see that duel is going to be crazy. Yeah, and as if those events weren't already hard enough to get yeah. tickets for. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, or yeah, just a f- yeah, right like the crazy. basic average person to a fucking afford. You're talking about like the World Cup status. is like oh, now you're yeah. making it those two events, which for the USGA to like ban them to play in, I think there would be also a fucking uproar. Those guys have power. Don't don't yeah. question that. You know, Phil Mickelson. If he walks into a room, he, people listen. You know, I dude, sometimes too well. I don't think they're gonna do anything like that. I don't think they're gonna follow the the PGA tour and, and banning everybody. I'm don't. just I'm just saying, people are in the streets. They're talking about talking. it. <laughs> it could happen. The streets are buzzing. <laughs> streets are buzzing. That would that would be fucking terrible. It's I been mean, a pretty fun for a lot of people who don't play golf too. I think yeah. the live has been like really <coughs> stirring the pot. Just one more thing that's getting more people to play the game. Yeah, well, that, for golf. The thing is, is it's drama. People love drama. That's like there's people I've been talking to who have, don't care about golf at all, but like, dude, this live shit's crazy, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it is. Like. It's like what it's just, it's kind of just like watching a reality TV show. Like it's millionaires being mad at millionaires or billionaires. <laughs> <laughs> and, but it's uh, it's cool. There's one thing we know for sure. <laughs> the, <laughs> the coverage on Tiger Woods on the PGA Tour just went up to 98%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be all 97. <laughs> any tournament he's playing in, it's just going to be, okay, we got no one else, Tiger. Tiger, Tiger, Tiger. 72 over par. Yeah. <laughs> every shot every highlighted. Sh- every shot. Tiger's 72 over par round highlights. Yeah. <laughs> Tune into our live Tiger cam. You know, it's, it's Every limp he takes day. down the fairway. Every tie, every shoe tie. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else got anything else for golf news? <laughs> No. That reminds me, Nick, of when freaking when they I saw an article written. It was it was they had a picture of Tiger Woods taking a bite out of a sandwich, and it was like, look how big the sandwich is. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember that article. I sent it to the group. I'm like, golf news. Yeah, yeah. that's what it was. Yeah, guys yeah. mucking a huge Reuben yeah. on the tee. <laughs> it was a big sandwich, but hey. Yeah. So from now on, it's going to be like breaking news, like Tiger or. Coverage on Tiger Woods bathroom hand wash, like yeah. <laughs> two yeah. pumps of soap instead of one this week. Yeah, let's yeah. see how that translates. Two to pumps game. of soap, <laughs> like jeez. Tiger mean, uses Purell on the front tee. Yeah. Is he? <laughs> does he have COVID? Yeah, <laughs> he puts asses in the seats, dude. So yeah, that, does. That, they'll make stories up with him and just 
they'll put it everywhere. <laughs> they're gonna ride his brand into the ground. Well, not in a bad way. Just like they're gonna use every bit that they can. Anybody got a pick? Uh, I'm I'm gonna ride with one of the. I'll, I'm gonna ride Phil. I'm gonna ride Phil. I'm gonna ride JT. <laughs> I think it'd be really fucking funny if Phil won. Like it would, people would not know how to react, and I love watching the world burn. So. I don't care enough to choose anyone else right now. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a hot take here. One of the Camerons, either Cameron Young or Cameron Smith. That's actually a good pick. What about Cameron Champ? Nah, nah, fuck you. <laughs> nah. Uh, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. So, so Tiger's got to be playing. In I that. think he is, right? I have no idea. No, he's not. Actually, he withdrew. Oh, yeah, that's week. right. He said he needed he more needs. time, yeah. Oh, He wow. needs time Damn. to think. All right, so no Tiger coverage. <laughs> Good, actually. And Bryson's still probably pretty injured right now, right? Yeah. Uh, well, he's going to, yeah, he's going to LAV too now, though. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, but he can play still. But he's not. I don't think he's in full no. health. He never yeah. is. Nick, Damn. can you look up if uh, Bryson's going to be playing in the U.S. Open? I don't think he's playing. I no. saw, like, something on social media the other day about how he was, he was like, just starting to, like, swing a club again. Yeah, and no. All right, so he's not playing. Get back to, like, speed training and whatever yeah. he was doing that fucked him up in the first place. So he if is. Phil or DJ win it, it's going to be wild. I don't think DJ's winning it, dude. I don't think he is either. I don't think he's winning he that. He shot, like, one over. Honestly? One over last, one under last year. I wouldn't be surprised if Rory won it. Yeah. yeah I could be honest. He's JT. hot. He's, he's hot. carrying the fucking he's PGA hot. Tour on his he's, back He's right getting hot right now. He's getting hot. Masters, I'm, PGA Championship, now the RBC Championship. Yeah. He's all. He's just got people fired up. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna keep picking Morikawa as well until he finally win. Until he wins one again, I like Morikawa. So uh, I'm gonna keep. Well, you don't like Morikawa? <laughs> uh, I just don't think it's a great pick. This no, week. it's a horrible. I pick. think it's so oh, bad. So what? Honestly, we need to be asking the freight train what his pick is because last <laughs> yeah, time he made a pick, hot. he walked away hot. with a, a handful of money, dude. Yeah. He is great because every time he's every time he freaking has a day to himself, he just on a Sunday he just sits there and watches it all day long. All right, so we're gonna quickly uh, do some. What are we watching here? Uh, I'll go first. Um, I think I watched every episode of Love, Death, and Robots this weekend, <laughs> and it was incredible. Season three is out now. It came out recently. Uh, if you don't know what Love, Death, and Robots is. It is a show where it's just a bunch of little mini stories. Sometimes the episode's like seven minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. And it was freaking awesome. Like I hadn't seen any of them. I watched the new season. I was like, I've got to, I could watch it all right now. And it really didn't take that much time to a couple hours, watch like every episode. And it was, fu- it was incredible. It was incredible. Love death and robots. I highly recommend it. Anybody seen it here? I've seen, I've been watching love death and robots for years. When it came out since the first season. Yeah. And, it's it's such a dark show. Oh yeah, so dark. Oh yeah, it's probably the darkest show out there. Honestly, that's that's animation verse. But the thing is, every episode has different animation. It's not consistent, yeah. and it's a completely different storyline. And it yep. all takes place in like ten to twenty minutes. And actually, twenty is even being, like there's really no twenty point. is the longest episode, and there's only like a couple of those. And actually, I think it's seventeen. Daniel. Daniel loves, you know, Daniel, the, yeah, our, our VFX guy, he loves, we had a whole conversation about Love, Death, and Robots, because it's all, that's the most animation-heavy series, I think, on Netflix. It looks, it, after, when you watch a bunch of episodes at once of, like, the real animation, the ones where they look like the real people, yep. it gets hard to tell if it's it does. real or not. Like, I'm like, is this an actor, or is this, uh, I can't tell, it's like, it was freaking me out. Those shows <laughs> will fuck with your mind, though. Yeah, but then, and then some of them are, like, claymation, though. And Have you seen like, the Crab episode? When they're on the boat the yeah. new, in the new season. Yeah. 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 That <laughs> episode had me wiling out, man. I was freaking out. <laughs> There's an episode. Well, can I tell them you think? Or actually, I mean, I'm never going to yeah. watch it. It's, it's really? Yeah. <laughs> well, for anybody no who hasn't here. seen it, well, anybody, not everybody might have seen the third season yet because it did just come out. Uh, but the crab on the boat episode is. <laughs> <laughs> it's so gory yeah. and so terrible. It is, yeah. but it's good. Have yeah. you? Would you say Stranger Things is more or less scary than Re- Love, Death, Robots? Oh man, I don't really think Stranger Things is scary at all. The new season, you didn't think? Not no. one bit. No, I thought the new season was kind of scary, <laughs> uh, but uh, I just can't take it. Like, I, I don't know. The, I don't know how to explain it. I, I, I didn't think it was scary, like whatsoever. <laughs> I didn't think it was that scary either, but I can see why you would think it was scary. Love, Death, and Robots fucks with your head. That's the issue. Stranger Things doesn't really do that. It's just it's just a really entertaining, good show with some frightening stuff. Love, Death, and Robots, like... How many seasons did you watch in one day? 
of Love That Love That. I watched the whole thing in one sitting, pretty much. Oh my god, Andrew, that is it's not, really not that much. That's not healthy, is what? No, that's no, <laughs> my Dude, mind that's, is in a pretzel. That's actually scary. He I had can... six baked potato sandwiches <laughs> queued up, ready yeah. to go. Queued one, up. one for every season. Ma, get the baked potato in the eye of the microwave. <laughs> no Where's butter. The no butter. <laughs> no butter, Ma. This is a healthy sandwich. <laughs> Extra dry. <laughs> I'm trying to lose weight, Ma. Uh, no, no carbs. <laughs> We're going to get into the baked potato sandwich later on in the episode. But, uh, yeah, uh, I did actually didn't have a baked potato sandwich this weekend, so everybody chill <laughs> out. I just watched the shitload of Love, Death, and Robots, and my entire reality was bent in half. Watch the show. I highly suggest it. Who wants to go next? I'll go quickly. I know I already told you guys because we talked over the weekend, but I watched Hustle, the new Adam Sandler movie where he's like the, the – Recruiter. He's, he's the recruiter, but he really wants to be a basketball coach. And overall, it was it was a pretty good movie, um, but I thought Adam Sandler played the role really well because he finally got to do something that was, like, centered around, like, authentic basketball, like an authentic basketball experience. Because you know him. He's a big... He's a huge street baller. He yeah, loves, huge like, street apparently baller. Apparently, he's really freaking good, too. Like, I've, I've heard a bunch of, like, guys on podcasts talk about how he's, like, really good at basketball, which is funny as hell to think about, but... He's been playing pickup ball for a long time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So nothing more to nothing more to divulge on there, but it yeah, was, don't, don't it was spoil it because it just came out. But uh, is is Adam Sandler's good in it? Yeah, Adam yeah. Sandler's great in it. Um, the kid, the the basketball player that he recruited from Spain or it's Italy. It's one Spain, of the Spain, other, Spain, Bo Cruz. He he was also really good in it too. Yeah, so yeah, that's it's basically both of them the entire movie. Uh, and, but I thought I thought it was good. It was a good quick watch. I think it's only like an hour and a half. I so. think the way you're describing it is accurate. I didn't think. I didn't walk away from that movie. Go, like, I wouldn't come on here and like I did with Severance and be like, everybody get out of your seat and go watch it right now. Like, or, you know, I didn't th- honestly, like, it was just a, like, it was almost like a B project. Like, I thought it was really, he's, I just love Adam Sandler. I love him and everything he's in. Right. But like the movie didn't, didn't really have me like emotionally captivated. It wasn't a fast paced movie. It was kind of slow, but like good, co- good quality content, great movie to watch. But like, you know, it was just good. Didn't blow my socks off, but right. didn't feel like yeah. I wasted right. my time watching I was gonna it say, either. It's a good watch. time killer. Like, at the end of it, you're yeah. like, okay, I did something. Everybody's going to watch that movie anyway. I mean, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah, it's going to be on, like, Netflix is going to be promoting that for the next, you know, month yeah. or so. I kind of piggyback. I watched it as well as soon as the text at the group chat, so. Do you have anything else that you watched? Nothing. So, um, I ha- I have, j- sorry to cut you off. I just, I have, uh, I have a little bit of an off-key watch. <laughs> oh. Let's hit it. So, this new show, Hacks. On HBO, they were pushing it really hard, and like I was really resistant to try it. I, you know, I but I did, and it's a dark comedy, so it's like very dark humor. But and it t- it's with an older woman, which also was like I just didn't feel like I would really resonate well with or mm-hmm. like really re- relate too much. But damn, I was wrong. I watched both seasons because the new season just came out, and it's basically about the old woman's career is like dying. She's a Vegas actress and or like a like a comedy specialist has her show when I'm Vegas. Career is dying, and so um, she hires a writer, and the writer's 25 years old, but this woman's like a jerk. And you just got to go watch it. It's I'd, I'd say it's a... Is that a limited series? No, I think it's a full series. It's uh, It's got two seasons out. Oh, um, okay. And so I would say it's like not a show... It would not be like a Severance-styled show, but it's good enough that I would say... I laughed, I felt good during it, and it was dark comedy, which I think mm. is, like, actually pretty hard to come by. Like, a good, like, dark humor show. I love that. That's, like, why I love Barry. Barry's, like, the perfect... Very much like that, but okay. less less violent. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. I think, actually, you, that's what... I was, uh, the reason I chose that is because I think you I think you will enjoy it more than they will. Okay. All yeah. right, yeah, I'm, I need, actually, we're kind of, like, on, our, on the last of our legs when it comes to, like, in my household for, for like, TV and movies right now, so... That's good info. Also, before we move on, I just thought of this. There's a movie out. It's been out. I've watched it a couple times now. I don't know why I'm just thinking of it now. If you haven't seen it, go watch Booksmart. Booksmart. Yeah, you told me about this. Yeah, yeah. it's basically a newer version of Superbad. But really? With, but with girls. And actually, the one of the main characters, one of the girls, is uh, it's Jonah Hill's, Jonah Hill's sister. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> what? That's yeah, so cool. Yeah, I'm pretty positive. Yeah. I'm What's my, it on? What's it streaming on? Uh, Hulu. Hulu. Okay, there you Hulu. go. That's awesome. Hilarious fucking movie. I love that. Really, really well done. Um, And like I said, it's on par with super bad, just kind of like more up to date. That's electric. I can't wait to watch that. <clears throat> oh, I have one question just before we get off this. 
So, have you finished Winning Time yet? No, honestly, I haven't even watched the second episode yet. Oh, really? I, I, I haven't had a lot of time for TV lately. Oh, right, because you just moved. I mean, we moved, but, like, I was out all weekend, and it's just been busy right. lately. So, it's not that I, I've, I've cut it off. I've just... Right. I just wanted to get a report, because, dude, I'm not going to lie, like, by the last episode, trust me, when, when I say, like, it's literally, like, I look back to that show, and I go, I'm upset that I can't, like, rewatch it for the first time. You know, like, is that good? Give me a rainy weekend, and I'll crush the rest of the the rest of the season. Are you guys caught up on Barry season three or no? Not yes. all the way. I'm, I um, haven't watched a single one of them yet. For season three. For season dude, three. I think he's going for, I think he's going for an Emmy. Season right. three is crazy. It's good. He just he's acting his ass off. He, Bill Hader, he's crazy, freaking awesome. He dude, I, honestly, like I don't know how you play that role and don't feel like a psychopath afterwards. Like, oh, he's a professional, dude. It's scary though. He's really into that character. Like it's there's like one scene where I don't really want to divulge too much, but like he gets in an argument with Sally in the writer studio because she's like a writer now, and it is scary. Yeah, like the the uh, yeah. It's he just does if it. I was her in that scene. I think I would have a little minor bit of like, it would be like a little weird to work with him. I would have Dookie in my pants after it. If he yelled at me like that, <laughs> I, I had would a full on, just full on poop. When that happened, when he did, when that <laughs> happened, because it happened out of nowhere, a lot of those shows give me a little bit of anxiety, you know, like just mm-hmm. like the typical. That's you know, exactly good. That's a good way to explain it. I yeah. had like a full blown like instant panic attack when he would get, for whatever reason, like when he yelled like that, it was so. Guttural. Was, and yeah, like, dude, it was way too real. It was like, it was almost so real that it was like, you would feel like he would have to be doing that. Like, as a matter of fact, he is doing that in real life. You know, not in his own life, but in the show. Like, when he's in that moment, he has to go to a dark place to get to that, you know? Right. You know, he's definitely pulling from some trauma on that one. Yeah. But, yeah, Barry Season 3, really good. Go watch it. Definitely recommend. Yeah, I have to. I, I, I loved the first two seasons. I just, so much time passed. And, like, and then Stranger Things dropped the same time as Barry. So, like, I've also, I want to note, I did watch Atlanta. Which is, you, have you guys seen that? Atlanta, I heard that was a really good show. First two seasons were electric. Didn't like the third season. Damn. Just, how, I, I don't need to say anything else about it. I was, it was confusing. It was, I don't know, I, well, not my season. Didn't like it that much. All right. The Hacks, Atlanta. I, I, I need to get one more thing out there because, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just, we haven't done what are we watching in a while. I watched this movie. It's been out for a while. It's called Hunt for the Wild Wilder People. Dude, it might it might have just shot into my top ten favorite movies of all time. I loved it. Hunt of the Wilder People? Hunt of the Wild People? Hunt of the Wilder People? Never heard of it. Never heard of it? All never. Right, I'll move on from it. Never, but never, never. It's one of those, uh, what's his name, Takiti movies, the guy who did Jojo Rabbit. It's so, so good. Uh, so highly suggest that movie. But Oh, this is the kid from Deadpool, the, yeah, yeah, the overweight yeah. kid who's got flames coming out of his hands. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is like his first movie. <laughs> what is going on? And that's, right now? that's Alan Grant from <laughs> Jurassic Park. Remember him Park. from Deadpool? He, I don't think. Did you guys watch Deadpool? Yeah, like six years. Yeah, like six years ago. Yeah, but uh, and then that's uh, it's Dr. Alan Grant from Jurassic Park. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, <laughs> nice to see you, buddy. <laughs> that's gonna wrap it. Wrap up some. What do we watch? I know we went a little long there, but uh, we this, we love talk about this shit. Um, Tales from the golf course. Anybody got a good one to start? Uh, Nick, I know you've been waiting to share one, so let me go first because mine's not that great. But <laughs> it's a t- it is a tale, and it happened on a golf course. So I was just thinking about the story a while ago because you know how we talked about like our golf course like needs or whatever, like what you want out of mm-hmm. a golf course. And one of our comments was that you don't want holes close together. Yep. So um, I don't know if I'm at liberty to tell the story. Well, I, I am, whatever. But my buddy's grandfather, so there's a course in Coventry, Connecticut called Twin Hills, and the ninth green is – is literally almost on top of the clubhouse. Like there is probably ten yards between the ninth back of the ninth green and the clubhouse where all the carts are parked. So you park your cart, whatever, blah blah blah, you leave. So my my friend's grandfather, this is this is probably twenty plus years ago, uh, he parked his cart and he was watching people hit up on the ninth green and he started walking away and a ball on the fly hit him in the eye and broke his eye socket. Whoa. Damn, yeah. Really? Yeah, left him partially blind in one eye. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. So it's like, oh I was just thinking about how we like hate how holes are on top of each other and you're hitting in other people's fairways. And then it would like, I remembered the story of him getting his fucking eye blasted out by a golf ball. Just walking back to his car after a round. Oh my God. You know what the craziest part of that is? It's like he could have gotten hit anywhere else and been totally fine, but it hit yeah. the specific part right. that's so easy to break, like hit right, right in the under eye. his eye. Yep. 
because it breaks the orbital bone or whatever. What percent it's blind is he now? I don't. I think he's only like twenty percent blind in one eye or something like that. <laughs> it could be more. The, like I said, this was a while ago. I think he's probably in his seventies now. Um, but yeah, it just goes to show you, like. And you gotta hit, listen, keep your ears open for that four call, or don't be the jerk that hits it somewhere into oblivion and don't call four. Yeah, you would have had to carry the green twenty yards. So like. Maybe think about your club choice next time you're, yeah. you know, yeah. hitting up to a green Stupidity. like that. So just get better at golf, really. Is what yeah, you're yeah, don't yeah. suck. I mean, yeah, because he should not have to be on high alert in the freaking parking lot. You know? No, yeah, no, yeah. but it, it happens very often at this place. So, yeah. I, honestly, they, the course actually just got bought out by another course, and I'm, I'm surprised they haven't. They've changed some stuff around the course, but they haven't changed the location of that green. So That's crazy. Or even like a net or something behind the green. Exactly, a simple net. It's not that Anything. hard. Yeah, but people are cheap. <laughs> yeah. Uh Nick, how about you? You've been waiting weeks to tell us. I am this. so ready for this, man. You know, last week we were really excited about a lot of stuff and just ran out of time, and I had to sit on this and not talk about it in the office for a whole week. So, here we go. So, I was playing a member guest last week with my dad, and one of the other members told me this about this story, so I had to look it up. But a young golfer who's 13 years old, he's from Minnesota, plays, first of all, he plays varsity golf at his high school at 13. That's crazy. Which is nuts to begin with. That's a whole other story. But so he's playing. He makes a hole in one on the seventh hole, right, at Minneapolis Golf Club. Keeps playing with the ball. Loses it. Hits it in the woods, right? Sad, sad story, whatever. Another guy finds the ball in the woods, takes it out, tees it up on the 14th hole, and it makes a hole in one with the same ball on the same day. No way. Yeah. Wow. Which is Nuts. That happened at your tournament? No, no, no. One of the members told me about oh, the story, oh. and I looked it up, but it was in Minnesota. Minnesota? Yeah, eh? <laughs> or something like that. I don't know what, I don't know what goes on over there. Yeah. Or <laughs> Whatever. Um, but it's just insane. Like, the same ball. And then they get to the clubhouse, and they're like, okay, who's going to take the ball? Oh, wow, yeah. I think so the second person gets it. The kid left the ball behind. It's not his problem. Wow, no mercy for the kid. <laughs> well, the kid should have stopped playing with the ball after he hit the first hole in one. He's yeah. a professional. He's like almost a pro golfer at that point. He's playing varsity golf. He should know. Who's going who's to teach this kid? They'd say what kind of ball it is. It'd be funny if it was like a top flight or something. Well, it has like his, It's. A, I think it's a Pro-V. It has his like school logo on it. It's on his shirt. Okay, then I think he should keep the ball. Yeah, there you go. So I think he, the older gentleman did give it to him, but just... I mean, two hole-in-ones in one day is a lot, right? But With the done. same ball on yeah. the same course in the same day. That's crazy. Damn, that's crazy to think. I've never even hit, I, like, I've never hit a hole-in-one. I've played a lot of golf, dude. That's it, hard to do. Nick, like, d- yeah, it is hard to do. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. I yeah. thought you were yeah. wrapping up there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry about that, Mac. Uh, Nick, Nick, didn't you say a bunch, a couple people hit hole in ones last weekend on your course? Yeah, during the member guest. So the member guest, it was just a Saturday. We had a hole in one Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then the Tuesday following. Wow, what hole? Um, one, two on four, two on eight. This was Luquissa. Yep. Okay. Wow. Yeah. No. That's that's doable. Yeah, and one of the members, it's his eighth hole in one. At Lewis Squizzit. So he has wow. four on hole four and four on hole eight. That's sick. Yeah, that's that's a lot of ones. Wow. He's got it rigged. He's got like an underground system where a ball pops this, up in the hole. This man does not miss. I'll <laughs> tell you that right now. And he plays more golf than I think I've ever seen anybody play. It's unbelievable. I mean, dude, golf is one of those sports where like if you get the reps in, you yeah. can just get so good at it. Oh, like, yeah. Honestly, like that last run at Kirkbray, like when I – slowed the game down and started stopped playing like an asshole you know and i haven't done that in a long time honestly it's been i mean how long i mean dude what years it's been since i've played around for like to go low yeah, i didn't even we, play the full round and do that that was just the back nine and but. to be honest even when me and you play with our friends like outside of work and stuff like we're always doing some type of scramble or something so yeah. like yeah we're taking that seriously but, like, to play four individual balls and, like, really try to shoot a low score, we haven't done that in a long time. Like I said, I was I was proud of you because I think I, June, se- yeah, I, June you, 2nd yeah. was a year working here. We've played a bunch of rounds together. And I don't, you know, we've never really taken the stroke play seriously. No. And then to go out and do it on 18 holes and stay in it, that was... That was uh, I was very proud of everyone. I mean, Even honestly, you, Nick. thank you. That's it's also <laughs> tough because it's very difficult to get the kind of content that we need to get for socials like social mm-hmm. media. That's more than just like golf clips. 
you know, like, or like, like a swing clip or something, yeah. you know, like, so like doing the little competitions, I think is like so much easier for film sake, but it obviously is inconsistent with the golf thing, unless you film like a full match, which takes a lot of time, you know, and you need, it's to really, you'd have to have two people playing it and other people filming it, right. which has been my experience in doing it. But for the most part, I guess what threw me though, was that I stopped, I started swinging slower and I think I hit like. 80% of the fairways yeah, with my driver. Right down the middle. What's weird is that it came down to two things. Wasn't chipping because I was I'm great at chipping. It was putting and a few poor decisions. Yeah. In fact, I could probably bring it back to one poor decision. And that was when I on the par on a par 5, it was dog leg right to go for the fucking fade, which is a difficult shot to hit on command every time and in the landing space that was available versus hitting a three wood. And that one shot, I think, fucked the round. I would have been shoot. I would have shot, you know, like a, a mid to high 30, 30 or like whatever th- on that back nine. Yeah. But didn't because I fucking, I got an eight on that hole. <laughs> I literally was playing like a, like a tour, like, like, like a college player or something on that yeah, whole yeah. round. And then I, on one bad decision, which Colucci actually, my caddy was telling me not to do. And I did anyway. Yeah. That's yeah. It. Josh doesn't like to listen to me. No, so. I, mean, I do <laughs> like to listen to you. Colucci. Of course. Course I made a call. <laughs> <laughs> I lived with call my decision. <laughs> <Call was wrong. laughs> no, and I it blew it up. Course management is unbelievable. Like a huge part of the game. Like yeah. my coach would run through us, right? Even at Kirk, right? If we just did the front nine. I mean, if we can all hit wedges, we can all hit it close to 300 yards, right? If we catch them really well, hard fairways are running, right? So think about it. We hit a good drive and we can all get up and down with a wedge. Maybe. 25% of the time, we'll just yep. say, right? So Never had that mentality, though. That's the thing. It's always been, how do I drive the green? Right, <laughs> yeah. right. And <laughs> then that, bring, that brings in so much more. Well, it brings in injuries that last me multiple weeks at a time, right. sometimes months or longer. Trees, rough, and it hit f- the cart girl, who knows? Yeah, you know? it's actually pretty bad. <laughs> it was, that was a good learning lesson for me. But the truth is, I'm still a barefoot, beer in the hand. Yeah. <laughs> Swing for the fucking fences player. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We kind of naturally transition there into some behind Omada. I'm going to save my story for later just because we're uh, running a little behind here. But uh, I really want to get people excited for the baked potato sandwich video. We shot, <laughs> we shot a video, and I don't think I've ever heard Josh laugh so much. And I think he was more, I don't know if he was laughing at me or with me. I'm not really sure. <laughs> uh, Nick, 70 yeah. <laughs> But we put a reel out about me talking about a snack that I like, which is the baked potato sandwich. Uh, it's baked potato, mozzarella cheese, toast. Easy, simple. And the baked potato has to be cooked in the microwave for 7 minutes, 45 seconds, or 8 <laughs> minutes. Uh, forget that stove shit. Forget that air fryer shit. Microwave time, baby. No butter. Uh, so I, I chef no butter, no butter, salt and pepper too. Uh, I chef it up. I chef it up with the boys. We made a whole funny video about it, and it was like one of the funnest video shoots that I've had uh, at Omana Golf in the last couple of years. So it was uh, it was awesome, and I'm really excited for it to come out. And I just want to let the people know to get them excited for when this video eventually comes out. It'll be on the Omana Golf YouTube. We'll have some reels cut up from it on our Instagram. It's going to be freaking hilarious, and uh, I can't wait for people to see it. I've had a blast editing it so far. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been listening to Will like chuckle at his computer as he's editing the, editing the video, so uh, I'm really excited for it to come out, and I think that we're going to try to do the club toss this week. Uh, I think we have it slated for Wednesday, and other than that, uh, anyone else got some behind-the-scenes stuff? Well, we have we have some new products coming in, some new prototype products that are going to be coming in this week or early next week. So yep, very excited that's going to that. mark the dawn of a new category, a num- number of new categories that we're going to be getting into for product stuff. So I think people are going to be pretty pretty excited with the stuff that we've come out with. We've been working on behind the scenes for a long time. So it's very exciting stuff. Good, also, yeah. when this episode comes out, it's uh, it's a little late, but um, we are running a Father's Day sale. Uh, 20% off the Trilight. Um, so we'll keep that code running for a few extra days. It's Golf Dad 20. So if you forgot about Father's Day and you're a shitty son, uh, <laughs> buy it next week. Do You know, don't, don't. Uh, just show them the picture of the receipt. You'll be good. Yeah. Product doesn't necessarily <laughs> have to be in. Just show them that you bought it for them. Yeah, exactly. Print them out a little screenshot of the cart. Yeah. <laughs> a little screenshot. Build it with paper mache, whatever you got to yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyone else got it? Anybody have anything else? Uh, like I said, fo- uh, be uh, looking out for the uh, baked, baked potato sandwich video. Hit the Father's Day sale. Get excited for new products. Follow T Box Talk on Instagram. It's at T Box Talk Pod. 
at T Box Talk Pod. We're on TikTok as well. Follow Omada Golf at Omada Golf on Instagram, TikTok. Check out our YouTube page. We're going to be putting up some awesome videos there. Uh, subscribe. And uh, big thing, please rate the podcast. If you made it this far, I hope you enjoyed it. And we, we appreciate you listening. But the only way that this thing can be the best that it can be is if people rate it. Uh, give us that five stars. Give us that follow. Turn notifications on so that you never miss an episode. And uh, just come along for the ride. We're having so much fun doing this podcast, and we want to keep doing it. And so let us know. Give us some feedback. Give us that five-star rating, and we'll be keep doing it. Uh, so thank you very much for listening to Episode 10 of T-Box Talk. Uh, I'm not going to start any fights about Yahtzee this week. I'm just going to I'm just gonna sign off, boys. Thank you so much for uh, joining me today. Peace out. Slim Shady out. Slim is out. <laughs>